What up, what up, what's the B-word, man? I'm Anthony Addison with another segment of What's the B-word. Make sure you like and subscribe to the page. Hit me up on Instagram, what's the B-word, 52, just like you see on YouTube. Hit me up on Facebook, what's the B-word, and hit me up on Twitter, B-word, 52. And y'all already know what's going on with me. I got my Ray Lewis throwback on today, man, University of Miami, but y'all see it in the back. Baltimore Raven fan, Raven Nation stand up, flock, let's get it. And if you're not a Raven fan, you might be a fan of whoever, you might be a fan of... These busters, my bad, wrong side. You might be a fan of these busters. You might be a fan of the Patriots or whoever. Hit that subscribe button anyway. Hit that like button anyway because we talk football, period, baby. But anyway, reason why we're here today is to talk about this other playoff game, the AFC Championship. Disappointed that it ain't the Baltimore Ravens, but you know, can't crowd spill milk. That milk and dry and it's already over with. We headed towards next year. So anyway, we got the Kansas City Chiefs. Pat Mahone, boy, versus that man, MILF legend, that monster of a man, Derrick Henry and the Tennessee Titans. So um, let's go ahead and get into it, man. It's going to be a good game. This is not the AFC Championship game that everybody thought it would be. Everybody was thinking about Brady versus Mahomes again or Lamar Jackson versus Mahomes or Lamar Jackson versus Brady. Yeah, it, Everybody didn't see Tennessee getting in there, but, you know, that's the beauty of the playoffs. That's the beauty of the tournament. That's the beauty of the playoffs. Everybody got a chance any given Sunday. I, all I got to do is be better than you one time. I don't have to be better than you through the whole season. I just got to be better than you one Sunday. One Sunday. That's all I got to do. And that's what Tennessee has taken advantage of. And you can't do nothing but, you know, shout out Mike Vrabel and them guys for doing it. They done got themselves in the AFC Championship. So let's go on dig into it, man. Um, I'm going to talk about Tennessee offense versus Kansas City defense. And with Tennessee offense versus Kansas City defense, it's pretty much plain and simple. Tennessee needs to do what they did the last two games. Turn around, hand that ball off to Derrick Henry. Now, Tennessee did open up the playbook a little bit against us. But I'm not saying in a, situ in, in a sense like they opened up the playbook on us like the whole game or something. They just had certain plays, and they called those certain plays at the perfect opportunity. We turned the ball over on downs. They did a play action over the top of the head. Um, of Marlon Humphrey. Um, they got to the goal line. Everybody was keen in on Derrick Henry. We got like two stops, and they ran an option with Tannehill, and, and he got the touchdown. They just called, you know, they opened up the playbook in ways I didn't see them. Well, not the play action thing, but as far as like the playoffs, they, they, they opened up the playbook um, in certain situations, and they just did good situational football as far as coaching. So they got to stick to with their mojo right there as far as like just – Calling certain plays at the right time. I mean, they called their game. Tennessee Titan co coaching staff called their game perfect against us as far as, like, doing, you know, the stuff that, you know, as far as, like I said, like the play agent um, fake and um, the, the option play with Tennessee, he called them plays at the perfect time. And that's what Tennessee going to have to do in this game right here. Kansas City has had one of the worst run defenses all season long. Now, I can't lie, in like the last five or six games, they've been way better than they have in the beginning of the year. I think that Steve Spagnuolo that's over there in Kansas City. So, he's getting them a little bit better and stuff like that. But um, Kansas City also got our man T. Sizzle. And though T. Sizzle is not the pass rusher that he was in, 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 in his prime years, one thing that he, 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 he still can do, is um help with the run support. He can he can he can he can he can um hold that edge, don't give up containment, and he can make a tackle. And you know, Suggs is still like you know kind of old school linebacker. He's not as small as a lot of these linebackers is in the league now. Not saying that Suggs is just gonna go out there and stop Derrick Henry, but you know, Suggs can help the help the run defense a little bit more than um what it was at the beginning of the season. Um, but um. Tennessee just got to run the football, man. If getting Derek, giving the ball to Derrick Henry is what got y'all here in the first place. Why would you change it? Why would you change it? You have Tannehill make the necessary throws that he can make because he can make them. You know, people got to understand this. Tannehill, is Tannehill the top 10 quarterback? No. No, he's not a top 10 quarterback. But Tannehill is still a veteran, and Tannehill still can make every pass that you need him to make. We've seen him do this in Miami. 
I, I, I felt like that Mariota was going to lose his job as soon as they traded for Tannehill, uh, Tannehill off the simple fact that they traded for Tannehill. You knew he was going to lose his job. That's why part of the reason Mariota came out playing so bad because he had had that behind him, you know, knowing that his job is in jeopardy. So, um, really, Tennessee just got to keep running the football and have Tannehill make passes or make plays when they need him to make plays. Now, he played a little bit of hero ball the last time Kansas City and Tennessee played, but I don't think this this is the game. Um, surprisingly, one thing that Kansas City defense is good at versus their weakness, which is um, the run game, is they're pretty good at pass defense. Reason being that they're so good at pass defense is because a lot of times when you got Pat Mahomes and them on that offensive side of the ball, they they, they get a big lead. So then the other teams end up becoming one-dimensional and trying to pass all game long, trying to keep up. And that's where they thrive it. That's where they thrive it. So Tennessee got to stick to the game plan. Another thing is if they run that rock on them and do it the right way, they're keeping Patty on the sideline where he needs to be, and that's going to help your defense out a lot, staying fresh because they're going to be run, they going to be out there running in the track meet with these boys right here. These is not my these is not the receivers in the Baltimore Ravens. This is a different this is a different monster as far as guarding the receivers. So Tennessee has to milk their clock. They have to keep Pat Mahomes on the sideline. They got to take it to their defense. Tennessee got built one of the best offensive lines in, 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 in um, as far as running the ball in football, and they got to carry on. They got to keep doing it. Because they got a legit chance to win this game. They beat Kansas City earlier this year. They have a legit chance of winning this game. And the way Derrick Henry is playing, and it's not all Derrick Henry. Don't get me wrong, y'all. That's what a, a lot of people are not paying attention to. It's not all Derrick Henry. It's not. That old line is blocking their tail off for Derrick Henry. And he then he making the plays. Because if Derrick Henry didn't have no line, he wouldn't be able to do what he's doing right now. Tennessee line is playing at a higher level right now where they can get him untouched going through the line of scrimmage because the key to stopping Derrick Henry, so let me talk about Kansas City defense. Um, the thing we did wrong was we was blitzing all game, all game long. And when you blitz a lot, you 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 risk giving up gap integrity and run fits, just like Coach say all the time. Y'all subscribe to Coach from Sip to Tally. But – you know, people people are shoot trying to shoot the gap and stuff like that, and you don't have as many in your linebacker course since you blitz, and you got you you you're not having guys just going sideline to sideline. Cause when people blitz, they think that straight up just be aggressive and go back to play. And with a running back like Derrick Henry, if you shoot the wrong gap, he got vision, man. He's not Trent Richardson. You know, Trent had the size and the speed, but Trent didn't have the vision. Derrick Henry has the vision to see the the cutback, the cutback lanes, or the holes that's the little holes that's opening up, and he's agile enough to squeeze through them holes. And once he get through that hole and he's untouched, the man can put his foot to the dirt and he can take off. He can take off, and he's hard to catch. And even though he's hard to catch, he's even harder to take down when he's past that second level. Because you can't. Everybody's poking fun at Earl Thomas and saying, "Oh, Earl Thomas, you suck because you couldn't de tackle Derrick Henry." Let's see y'all go out there and try to tackle Derrick Henry in the open field while he's running full speed. Man, y'all, I don't know his exact height and weight, but he's every bit of a 6'4", 245-pound running back. Running backs don't come this size all the time. They don't, especially with the speed and agility that this man has. So put that into consideration. When De if, if, if you let Derrick Henry get past the, to the second level full speed and he get past the second level – your DBs are going to take a beating, and that's what you don't want. Um, Honey Badger are tackling Derrick Henry. I don't think that's going to end well. I mean, y'all thought the Earl Thomas thing was bad, but I think, you know, Earl is a little bit bigger than Honey Badger. If Honey Badger get caught by <laughs> Derrick Henry, then it might be ugly, man. It might just be ugly. So, um, um, they just uh, uh, back to Kansas City defense, man. They got they got to try to stop Derrick Henry before he gets a full steam ahead. That's that's key to Kansas City defense trying to stop this dude. You gotta go. For, you gotta. You cannot let him get to the second level untouched. 
and D line, if that means putting your pride to the side and cutting that line down and letting linebackers make plays, then y'all gotta do it. Because because real talk, um, after after our line was getting pushed around a little bit and stuff like that, if I'm I'm not trying to say Wink not a good coach and all that and don't know nothing, but I would have been at the time I would have been like everybody need to hit the dick now, everybody need to cut everything down so our linebackers at least have a chance to make a play. Because if Derrick Henry gets to pass the line of scrimmage, and I'm not saying to the linebackers, I'm talking about actually like a step or two past the line of scrimmage without getting touched. Full steam ahead, man. You're not getting that man down. He going to lean forward, and he going to get another three, four out you. He gonna, if Derrick Henry get through the line without getting touched, that's almost a guaranteed nine yards. Almost a guaranteed nine yards every time. So Kansas City have to plug up them holes, and they linebackers got to meet him at the point of attack. That's just key. That's just key. Um, and that's all I got to say about the off- Tennessee offense versus Kansas City defense, man. Um, one more thing. I said this about Can- um, t- t- Tennessee when we got ready to play him. Kansas City got to hit him low. Am I saying blow his knee out? No, because I don't want to see him blow his knee out. If y'all follow my channel all year long, I have talked highly about Derrick Henry all season long. I like the guy. I said it on my Facebook page that that dude is the most underrated running back in the NFL. And I said that about seven weeks ago. So you got to hit that guy low. You got him hit him at the money spot. Money spot being the, the, the thigh. You got to hit that man in his thigh. You got to. Because tackling Derrick Henry up high is not possible. You're not going to get that big man. Like I said, he's six foot four. Imagine his wingspan. Imagine his wingspan now. You know what I'm saying? And imagine how how far how, how hard it is for you to get to him and he's trying to stiff on you. He got a long wing wingspan, man. Right? And this is this is a wingspan. This is just a this is just a type of running back that the NFL is not used to seeing. As far as with size and stuff like that. They don't come around all the time with all the attributes plus the size. But anyway, um, that's all I got to say about KC defense going against Tennessee offense or all, they offense going against KC defense. Let's talk about KC offense going against Tennessee defense. And um, KC got to be ready to play because, like I say all the time, Love them, hate them, Baltimore fans. And you know we feel some type of way about them. But Dean Pease is a good defensive coordinator. Dean Pease knows how to game plan and, 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 and get his team ready to play. I mean, get his defense ready to play. And then you have another defensive mind in Vrabel over there. So, you know they're going to be ready to roll. Um, but I can't lie. I don't see Tennessee defense just doing that great against this offense right here. Um, all Kansas City got to do is just do what they do. Andy Reid is a mastermind at drawing up plays. And, man, Tyreek Hill and Sammy Watkins and Hartman and Robinson and um, the running back Williams, I mean, they just loaded, man. They just got so much speed. I mean, I, I think I've never seen a team this fast before ever. And not only is they just, they just flat out fast, but you got a mastermind, Andy Reid, calling the plays, man. So it's, I, I honestly think it's going to be tough for Tennessee to slow this offense down. Because even if you get a good rush on Pat Mahomes, his arm is so special and the way he he, he, he manipulates the pocket, it's hard to get him. It's just hard to get him, man. The dude don't get sacked often and it's by design. It's by design by how he play, and it's by design by Andy Reid because the man just got a candidate a lot of folks don't have. They just don't. It's just it's just crazy how strong and accurate this man's arm is. I mean, like I, like I was saying about him last year, man, when you seen the man throwing the ball across field, and, you know, when somebody throws across, across field, it usually, you know, floats and hangs in the air a little bit long, but his don't. He throws the cross field and it's a laser. It's only one other dude I can remember doing it like that. But he wasn't accurate. And that's Brett Favre. That's Brett Favre. He was he, he's probably the only person I can remember that was throwing it across their body and the ball. I'm not saying he's the only person that threw it across his body, but I'm saying the ball was having that much zip on it going cross field. But the only difference is Patty is accurate, man. 
deadly accurate. And the speed that he got, I just don't think Tennessee defense will be able to hold up. I mean, they would need Casey and um and um ah I can't I I, I forgot my man's name and he a bulldog, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Simmons. Casey and Jeffrey Simmons gonna have to have them a game for them to 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 hold up because it's no secondary. It's like secondary wise, like cornerbacks wise. You don't have enough, man. You don't have enough. Nobody has enough as far as, like, with the cornerbacks and stuff to slow the old guys down because they just got so much speed. I mean, Sammy Watkins is, like, the third option, third, fourth option. And not Sammy I, I Watkins is not an all-pro and stuff like that, but Sammy Watkins still can move. Everybody on that, on uh, no, everybody on their receiving court is 4-3 or better. And I'm sure people don't understand how just fast that is. Like, remember when Williams, the running back, broke and all the defenders, all the defenders was chasing after him and they couldn't catch him? But all of a sudden, you seen a blur shoot past everybody and it was Tyreek Hill running beside him and he just zoomed past everybody? Crazy speed, man. Crazy, crazy speed. This is why I stress that Tennessee got to run that ball and control that clock because they offense in this game right here, they offense is their greatest defense. They got to play keep away, just like we do, like we did all season. They have to play keep away. And the scary thing about it, and that's why Pat Mahomes and them scared me out of anybody when the playoffs were getting ready to start, um, is the fact that even though, if even if you short the game up. The Kansas City Chiefs can still strike with a short amount of time. Look at last week. What it was 28 points in seven minutes. They don't need long. They don't need long. So excuse me. Y'all like my my dumbbell, my dumbbell beer mug. <laughs> but they Tennessee offense is their best defense in this game right here because man, Patty and that offense don't leave, they don't need long to strike. They don't. They just don't. And man, it's just they offense is like one of the craziest things I've ever seen, man. I mean, it's just like the perfect storm as far as on the offense side of the ball. Thank God they don't have a top ten defense. Even though the defense been playing better, but anyway, I'm not gonna pick who I think gonna win this game right here. On the simple fact, I don't know. I don't know because you never know how this game will go. Derrick Henry might have a a, a a heck of a game again and beat these guys, but at the same time, it might not be enough because Pat Mahomes don't need nothing but seven minutes to score 28 points. Just listen to that. If y'all follow football, y'all know that's remarkable, man. He all he needed seven minutes to score twenty eight points. But anyway, man, y'all make sure y'all subscribe to my channel. Shout out to the Tennessee Titan fans. Shout out to the Kansas City Chiefs fans. Congratulations to y'all to making it to the AFC Championship. I can't wait to watch these games, man, and ready to see who's gonna be in the Super Bowl. Um, y'all seen I said something on my Facebook page about who I think gonna be in the Super Bowl. I hope it's not that. I'm not gonna throw it in the air on my YouTube channel. If you wanna know what it is, just go look on my Facebook page and it's clear as day. But anyway, man, y'all hit me up for mailbag questions. Mailbag questions is what I talk about. Any player, any team, high school, I mean, I said high school, college, or NFL, I shout you out on the video. I tell you my honest opinion, and um, I post the video, man. But anyway, this, this, I was just finishing the video, and a little man came through the door. He just woke up from his nap. But anyway, this was the B word, man. I'm Anthony Addison. Y'all like and subscribe to the page. What's the B-Word 52 on Instagram? What's the B-Word on Facebook? B-Word 52 on Twitter. And I'm out.